Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be looking today at Linux Mint Debian Edition or LMDE6. But this is brought to you today by my uh, sponsors, both the channel members of Cyber Gizmo and my Patreons. So thank you very much to all of you that help support the channel financially. If you want to get involved, there's a join button if you want to join the channel and a link in the description if you want to join my Patreon. Let's take a look at, uh, first of all, a quote by Edgar Dykstra. And he said, this is from the hum Humble Programmer in 1972. He said, the cost of adding a feature isn't just the time it takes to code it. The cost also includes the addition of an obstacle to future expansion. But Linux Mint 6 was released September the 27th of 2023. I don't know when the exact support end date is for this. I didn't see one. There's usually one published in the release notes, but I didn't see one here today. But uh, I'll find out, and when I do, I'll put a, I'll put a, uh, I'll pin a post to the comments on this uh, particular video. LMD6 is based on the Linux kernel 6.1, which it co which comes from Debian 12's stable, which is the base uh, for LMD6. They also add in, of course, all their magic from Linux Mint 21. So all you're doing is you're just slipping out. Uh, Ubuntu and and pushing in Debian. Yeah, it sounds real easy, doesn't it? But I'm sure it was a lot of work for them. The only desktop that is currently supported with LMDE is Cinnamon, and that will be version 5.8. They also support booting either legacy BIOS or UEFI. They do have the keys uh, from Microsoft, which of course controls Secure Boot, and uh, so that Hopefully, I haven't tested it, but hopefully that will work. What do you need to run this? Well, first of all, you need an x86 64-bit. Part of the reason for that is that Ubuntu doesn't support 32-bit anymore. Debian still does, but they did not pick up the 32-bit. I would imagine that that would just be a lot to maintain, and it would make it a one-off from their Linux Mint 21. And yeah, I wouldn't want to do that either. That that would just be a nightmare. But you need at least two gigabyte of, of uh, RAM and four gigabyte is recommended. How much disk do you need? They recommend 20 gig. I would say 32 would be the minimum. They uh, also say 100 gigabyte of uh, disk is recommended uh, for any serious work. However, that's going to vary. I mean, if you're doing video editing, 100 gig is going to get used like that. So, yeah, it's not going to last very long. And then your screen resolution, 1024 by 768. If When you go to install this, some things you should know. If you go to install the auto disk, then LMDE will automatically choose a swap partition, which is the same size as your physical memory. Now, that may not be desired. I mean, if you're not hibernating, you don't need that much. But there is an, an option on the auto in which you can specify your swap size. So maybe one, maybe the next release, maybe Linux Mint will give us that ability. But so you probably, there's, if you'll probably want to go and do a manual partition in order to put in the amount of swap or build a swap file, which you can do as well. If you're on a virtual machine, however, like I am, one of the tricks I do is I install Linux Mint with in, by giving it 2 gig of memory. And then once it's done installing, I'll shut it down, change the memory size to what I want, bring it back up. And now I've got a, uh, a partition size of 2 gig instead of whatever amount of memory I'm giving it. 8 gig for today, by the way. The other one is, uh, the other note is Gparted, if you are manually partitioning, it does not save the mount and labels consistently uh, from Gparted back to the partition table that is shown for uh, LMDE. So just be aware that you check those partition entries and edit them on the partition page to put the appropriate mount point and label if you want one.
there's an option on the in, on the installation page for setting up your user account. At the bottom, there's a checkbox to encrypt your home directory. So that uses eCrypt, uh, eCryptFS to be exact, which is the encrypt, encryption file system. If you use that, you should be aware that default out of the box with LMDE, and I went back and I checked this for Linux Mint 21 as well, What's supposed to happen is that when you log off, it's supposed to uh, unmount that encrypted directory and leave it in its encrypted form. So the only thing you should see is the original home directory upon which the migration was built. That does not work. It, that does not happen. It will, even after you log out, whether you're using uh, the GUI or whether you're using SSH, that will remain mounted unencrypted. And that's not desirable. That's not what's supposed to happen. I'm gonna show you some changes today that I made as a workaround. If you don't wanna do what I did, uh, that's fine. You can just reboot your machine and that will unencrypt it. So the same features that were in Linux Mint 21 are in LMD6. I'll leave a link to the Linux Mint and you can go review those if you haven't seen them. I'm, I, I'm not gonna cover all those again here. Uh, there's just not a need to do that. As far as the kernel changes are concerned, though, I will re I'll real review those because we are going to benchmark this today, and it benchmarks the kernels. So Linux Mint uh, Debian Edition uses the same kernel as Debian, which is 6.1. That was released back in December of 2022. L the reason they use 6.1 is that is a long-term support release and has a current end-of-life support date of December 2026, and that's when that will run out. There's also initial support for Rust programming in 6.1 and Kim, uh, KM SAN. That's a kernel memory sanitizer is added into that part of the kernel. There's also multi-generation LRU, and that just gives you better memory management. There's also uh, memory tiering re improvements that have been done in the 6.1 release. Maple Trees is now the default tree data structure that's being used by the kernel. It's much more efficient than the old B-tree method that they used to use. The processes are allowed to induce collapsing of memory into transparent huge pages. So there's support for KCFI. That is a forward edge control flow integrity scheme. Also BPF, the Berkeley packet filters, that offers features for a panic helper. Also it implements PKS number seven. And then it brings us to the welcome screen. This is very similar to Linux Mint. So if you're familiar with this on Linux Mint, it'll, it'll work exactly the same. So I, I am gonna, <laughs> let's get rid of the blinding light. <laughs> And then we can choose what color. I like these binary ones. So let me... It's kind of a Ubuntu look, isn't it? Kind of the uh, orange and black. The next thing I want to do is run the update manager and make sure that we're current. So the first time you run this, it's going to say, hey, everything's good. This is just just like Debian in that you have to run it twice after you do a refresh in order to you know, refresh your packages because what it's saying is, yeah, there's no updates based on the packages you have cached. But if I refresh the package cache, then, yeah, it's going to find stuff for me to do. This will install either Debian packages or flat packs. So let's see if we can find one here. Let's look at GIMP. So I can, there's the standard package, and I can also install it as a flat pack. This comes pre-configured. You don't have to do anything. So that's nice. Before we do anything, let's see what we got space-wise on the default box after the update. So we're, we're sitting on 7.4 gig. All right, let's take a look at my usual stuff here. So we got 92 tasks running. Our memory looks like 1 gig about a gig total disk is sitting at 8.2 gig for the root about 1.38 gig out of the total of eight 
haven't dipped into the swap file yet which is fine cpu overhead on now this isn't idle there is stuff running but yeah uh, okay so the other thing is my home directory has been unencrypted i can do a mount and that'll show this right here so that's the ecrypt it what it does is it mounts on top of my home uh, DJ where directory and with an unencrypted version of my home, my home directory. Let's go ahead and finish this up. So I want to do a, my usual. Let's see what we get. Last time I think I ran this in five, I think it was down in the mid sixties. 64, a little bit lower than the, I remember. I thought it was around 66, but this tool over time gets pickier and pickier. So yeah, one of the things we're getting knocked down for is this. They have a nice green version of the Debian logo in, in the left. That's a nice touch. This is called Fay. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the benchmarks. I'm going to do something similar to what I've done in the past. We're just going to look at the benchmarks uh, from a aggregate perspective. And if you want the individual benchmarks, I think what I will do is I'll just tack them onto the end of this video. If you want to watch them, uh, I'll just do the same thing I did where it just drives through it. Or you can go out to follow the links that are in the description and go out and put them together and look at the results yourself uh, in whatever timing you'd like to do that. I make them always available to you. So one of the things I want to do is, like I did this before, is go through an explanation of what I'm seeing here. So uh, I have Manjaro, Fedora. This is Endeavor OS. This is Ubuntu 2304, like it says. This is the LMDE6 that we're testing. This is Debian 12, Red Hat, and Linux Mint 212 as a comparison. So we have the, hopefully the latest things that we can look at. I have not done any, any explanation on Manjaro yet. So these, these are just benchmarks without a supporting video. So right now, uh, according to this, it is the fastest followed by Fedora and, and Endeavor. Then Ubuntu is slightly faster than LMDE in the harmonic mean of the MIBI bytes per second test. In the IOPS test, Linux Mint outperforms all of them. And LMDE drops way down here. And, you know, Linux, Debian isn't that far away from it. So that's, you can say that those are about even. So yeah, which is what you kind of expect. Linux Mint again runs pretty well here in the harmonic mean of uh, megabytes per second test. So yeah, it's doing quite well. Then we have Manjaro, Endeavor, Debian, and then LMDE followed by the other ones. Now this, LMDE does pretty well, and this is the all the tests. So overall, it's doing okay, but it isn't the winner. As you can see, Endeavor is faster, Manjaro is faster, Ubuntu is faster. So yeah, we have, uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a few, but, and Debian is, about the same again so i you know that's down in the noise so they're pretty much that's what you would kind of expect right that debian would be right on the money then we have the cpu massive tests uh manjaro is 1.0 see these are there's these are not huge these are like four percent faster than the red hat the uh, slowest so yeah it, we're not talking huge numbers and difference here uh, let's see, um, geometric mean of all disk tests, and that would be F disk, or excuse me, that would be also the, the D, uh, the D disk suites as well. So, yep. 
So yeah, it's running one and a half times faster than that. But look at this. You think these are large differences? It's not. It's you got one in one point five seven versus one point five one. So six hundredths of a of a yeah of a uh, point. Okay, geometric mean and memory test LMDE does quite well here. Debian does too. But again, these are not wild differences. I mean, as you can see, I mean, we're not talking three and four times speed. Um, so, yeah, I would say they're pretty close to being even. You could almost argue, oh, well, that's all down in the noise. And yeah, you'd probably be right. It is. It's pretty close to one another. These are running, you know, there's 3%, 2.7%. <laughs> These are not huge differences. Same thing here. So I guess I want to have to find some better way of benchmarking that has a larger a larger difference. But they're, all of the distributions as far as what I measure, the kernel and the, the base infrastructure, there's going to be differences when you're comparing this against different models of hardware. So if I were to compare Intel versus AMD, then certain distributions, depending upon what version of the kernel they're running, would have an advantage with the newer versions of the kernel on newer versions of the CPU. And that's where you, I would expect to see a lot of these delays. But the wild changes that we used to see back when I started doing this, those have been all evened out over time. So yeah, we're, we're gradually reaching a point where you pick the distribution you want to use because they all run pretty close. Uh, in their in their performance. What are my final thoughts? So LMDE is, I mean, if you're if you're looking at the speed <laughs> benchmarks, if you're looking at the speed of the benchmarks, there there's so little distance between them uh, that almost you could almost say that it's in the statistical noise. They're all running at about the same speed, uh, with the exception of Red Hat, of course, which is using a really older kernel. Uh, and on my box, which is a 12th gen, it doesn't have the right support for it. So, yeah, it really needs to have a, a, a newer kernel for that. And, hope, and maybe sometime they'll backport in those changes. As far as its ability to uh, look like a Linux Mint 21, it does. I mean, it certainly does that. But it does not have, uh, LMDE does not have the GUI options that Linux Mint does, of course. It, I think they used to support Mate years ago, but uh, they dropped that many years ago. So, the, yeah, uh, Cinnamon is the only one you have there again. So all in all, I think LMDE is a, is a it's a great safety net. And it's really was intended to it was created in order to be a safety net if Ubuntu went too far in their development process that Linux meant just they just couldn't follow them anymore and uh, wanted to branch back onto Debian in order to have a system which follows kind of their their way of thinking and their philosophies and the direction that they want to, they want to take. Uh, one of the other things that I really like about this is that you have you can install app images, you can install flat packs. You can, if you want, install snaps, although support I don't think is there out of the box for it. I didn't test it. But usually Linux Mint uh, does not include snaps. You have to install it if you want that. Or you can install standard Deb images. With that, that's all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye for now.